Greetings to you my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. From today onwards, we will be coming to you on every Saturday, Monday and Wednesdays. At this time bringing you a special message because I believe the Lord speaks to his body and even right now he speaks to his body, his people. And we know that he speaks to us through the word of God. But the Holy Spirit in us always brings us a message to the times that we are living in. And I believe that he speaks to us, preparing us, making ready a people prepared for his second coming. And I strongly believe as I know that you also will believe that his return is imminent and his return is very soon and his soon return will take place at any time. And my dear friends and my dear brothers and sisters, there are certain things that the Lord is speaking to us even right now about the, the work that we need to do or his body needs to do or he expects his body to be doing when he's written, when he's coming. And I know that you are aware of the word of God and I know that the word of God speaks to us individually. But as a collective body, our ministry is called the Numa Elias Ministries, which means the, uh, the ministry that operates in the spirit of Elijah, preparing and making ready a people prepared for the Lord. And th that's the mission, the vision that he has given us. And on, in that context, I would like to bring to you a very special series of messages uh, not only me my colleague who will be uh, sharing his thoughts his his insight his revelation with you from the next lesson onwards but uh, uh, what we are uh, bringing to you what we bring to you what we are planning to uh, uh, put before you is that the main message or the collective message that the Lord is speaking to his body right now. My dear friends, I know that most of you believe that Christian life is a journey. It's a Christian journey that, that the moment we became Christians, moment we, the mo moment we accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we started this journey. Then the baptism took place and we are on this journey. What is the journey? What is this journey? And what can we expect in this journey? My dear friends, the Lord has not left us in the dark about the journey. He has given us many examples. And the word of God is full of that advice and uh, uh, admonition and guidance about the journey. And so, we named this series at the beginning of our, uh, 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 the lessons that we are planning to do, the series of uh, lessons that we are planning to do. The first series is called The Journey. Okay, what is this journey? The journey is the transformation that every Christian needs to go through from the time he accepts Jesus into his life as his Lord and his Savior until he meets the Lord. So this journey is the transformation that takes place inside all of us, inside you and me. The transformation is this. We all know that as we come to the Lord, the way when we, when we accept uh, when we accept, ex accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives, we were not good people. We were all sinners. We were all living in sin. And uh, if we are honest, uh, we will you will agree with me that we all were going in a straight path to destruction, eternal damnation. 
But the moment we accepted Jesus into our lives, our lives started transforming. And the journey is, as I told you earlier, from the sinful nature that we had when we accepted Jesus to the righteous image or the righteousness that came from Jesus that we are supposed to, we are, we are uh, advised to or we are destined to be like Jesus. So the, the journey is from that sinful nature into the righteous nature of Christ. And it doesn't happen automatically, it doesn't happen instantly. It's a process and it's a journey. Jesus spoke about this journey. He said, narrow is the gate, difficult is the way that leads to life. That's a journey. And he said, only few will find it. And he also said that broad is the way and easy is the way and many will go through that. But the end of that road or the broad way is death. But the deception today is, my dear friends, the enemy or Satan or the serpent as he deceived Eve is deceiving the church today in this aspect that is about the journey. What the enemy has brought into the church, what he has put into the minds of the, the innocent Christian is this, that even the broad way leads to life. Jesus very specifically said, narrow is the gate, difficult is the way that leads to life and only few will find it. How true, how true. Because as we look around us in the Christian love, we find that many, many are going in the easy way. They are taking the easy way out. Nobody wants to be persecuted. Nobody wants to be in a difficult situation. Everybody wants everything to be normal and comfortable. And most of the Christians are uh, 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 enjoying the comfort zone and then they think the, the, the enemy has brought in this heresy into the church saying that if you are a Christian everything has to be comfortable everything has to be uh, 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 you know easy which is not the truth right so what is this journey what is this journey as I told you, from sinful nature into the righteous nature of Christ. And the journey takes place in a narrow path and there are difficulties. My dear brother and sister in Christ, the Lord has not left us in the dark about the journey and what to expect on this journey. So I'm going to share with you today as the first lesson as we start the example that we have from the word of God about the journey it is very similar to the journey that the Israelites took out of Egypt they were in slavery in Egypt like most of us were slaves to the worldly system before we accepted Jesus we were, we were on this rat race we were slaves to the system and, and somehow the Lord uh, performed miracles and opened our eyes and got our attention. And most of us wanted to start this journey with the Lord. As Moses came and uh, uh, did miracles to get the attention of the Israelites, Jesus is doing miracles today to get the attention of the believer or the non-believer. And whoever wants to be released from the, the bondages and the bondage of this world system, they put their trust and faith in the 
our Lord Jesus and they start this journey. And what happened to the, 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 the Israelites? Naturally, during that journey from Egypt to the promised land, through the desert, is happening to every one of us, you and me, spiritually on this journey. So what happened to the Israelites naturally is relevant to us spiritually from Egypt to the promised land. We don't have to search and go far because Paul uh, uh, wrote about this. So I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 1 to 11. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them God was not well pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain, as some of them also complained, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. So my dear friends, Paul says the Israelites were baptized into Moses through the Red Sea and with the uh, cloud. Now we know, you and I both know that Moses did not stop the people on the halfway through the Red Sea and did the baptismal service. We know that. But what Paul was referring to is that is a symbol of baptism. Because you and I, as we start our journey, as we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, because of some miracle that took place to us or to a friend or to a relative, we started believing in Jesus and we started putting our trust on the Lord himself. So. The first thing that you would do or that we are asked to do or required to do by the Lord is go to the baptism. Go through that process of baptism. Baptism, baptizo means you need to go under water. You need to be immersed in the water. And just by immersing in the water that you would not get baptized, but you have to do it with the right conscience. You need to do it with an understanding. So I believe most of us, you and I, have gone through that process. And understanding what baptism means, uh, uh, because Paul says in Romans 6 about baptism, that it, at baptism we are crucified with Christ Jesus, and we are buried with him in baptism. And as he rose from the dead, that we come out of the water as a new man. That's what Paul says in Romans chapter 6, 1 onwards. So at what takes place is, at baptism, when we go underwater, that symbolizes that we are dying with Christ. Like Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ Jesus. That takes place at baptism. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. 
and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We are supposed to die to self and live for Christ. Die to self uh, means that you know you, you, you put off yourself and your, uh, whatever you, you had, uh, the hopes or plans or everything, you just left, leave it at the Lord's hand. And you deny yourself and take up the cross daily and follow Him. Luke chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus spoke to the crowd. Luke chapter 9 verse 23 Then He said to them all, If anyone desires to come after Me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. It's very clear that Jesus himself, our Lord himself, wanted anyone who wants to follow him to take up his cross daily and come after him. And he has in many other occasions, he has given us in other words about dying to self crucifying the flesh that's the journey that's the beginning of the journey that's what we are supposed to do at the beginning of our journey crucifying the flesh the desires plans our hopes and everything crucifying dying with the Lord and allowing the Holy Spirit to live through us that means Christ in us the, the, the character of Christ has to be increased daily. Paul says our inward man is being renewed every day. So the journey is this, as we have, as we have read this passage, the people were baptized into Moses through the Red Sea and through the clouds. And they passed through the Red Sea into the wilderness, the Sinai, the Sinai Desert. And and, and, and he says here, he says in verse 3, they all ate the same spiritual food. And I, you and I know that uh, they, they ate natural food. They ate manna. But Paul here says spiritual food. And also he says that all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank that the spiritual, they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. My dear friends, what what Paul doing? What is doing here? What he is trying to explain here is that the journey that the Israelites took uh, uh, from Egypt to the Promised Land is as the same journey that you and I are on. But only difference is the Jews, the Israelites, they went through a natural journey. They, it's, it's a physical uh, location, geographical locations, Egypt and Promised Land, Israel. But for us, it's a spiritual journey. And that's why this, he says, they drank, they all of them drank from the spiritual rock. And that rock was Christ and they ate spiritual food. And we are, on this journey, we are supposed to depend on God for spiritual food and spiritual drink. And that rock that the water came from is Christ. How beautiful, how beautiful this journey. But remember, don't forget that the journey took place in a desert. You and I know in a desert, nothing grows, right? So we need to, they needed to, they means Israelites, needed to depend on the Lord for food. And that's why every time when they ran out of food, they complained. Every time they ran out of water, they complained. And Paul is very specific about this, about the complaints. He said, they always 
uh, uh, made the Lord angry by their complaining. So he said, don't complain. But trust in the Lord. Have faith in the Lord. Because Bible says, just shall live by faith. If you have faith in the Lord, and if you trust in the Lord, and if you have put your trust in the Lord, you will not lack anything. But if you start complaining, like the Israelites did, the Lord will be angry, as he was angry with the Israelites. So the journey is, from the sinful nature that we have, that we inherited when we were born into this world. We inherited this, this sinful nature. The journey is from that nature to transform into the nature of Christ, the image of Christ, because God created man in his own image. But man, by disobeying God, lost the image, godly image. The godliness, man lost it. Jesus, the image of God that we can touch, the same image of God in a human form, came into this world and died for us and paid the price for our sins and gave us the opportunity to transform into that God likeness or to have that godliness once again through faith in our Lord. My dear friends, this journey is an interesting journey. This journey takes us from being a sinful man to a righteous man. Because on our own, none of us are righteous. Only righteousness or only righteous man on this earth is Jesus, man Jesus. And we are supposed to transform into his image. That's why Paul says in Romans chapter 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind so that we can know the will of God, the perfect will of God. And for that he says in verse 1, he said, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That is the beginning. That is what we are supposed to do at the beginning of our journey. So let me ask you this question, and what I think you should ask yourself is, Am I on this journey? Am I on this journey? Or are you in a different journey? Looking for worldly things? Because the broad way that Jesus spoke about gives you all that. It's a deception of the devil. Giving you the impression that at the end of it you will have eternal life. But Jesus specifically said the end of it is, is death. Eternal death the second death, the lake of fire. So, it's a wise thing for us to, uh, wise thing, if we can, uh, discern or uh, just, just ask ourselves, um, am I on this journey? Am I on this journey? A transforming, character transformation, is, is, is it taking place in me? Is the character transformation taking place inside of me? Is it happening? Or am I am on a different journey that leads to death? My dear friends, it is time for us to know the truth because the truth shall set you free. The truth is, Jesus came to restore the lost image of God in man. And the journey is being transformed into the image of Christ so that we can have eternal life. 
and in many many epistles Paul Peter John speaks about this and say the eternal life is for those who are on this journey because the sinful nature cannot inherit anything and those who are in sin will not inherit the kingdom of god very specific very clear i can bring you many bible verses but i know you are aware of that galatians speaks about it colossians speaks about it ephesians speaks about it the letters all the letters speaks about godliness through jesus christ and it's a journey so i hope you are on this journey and i pray that we all will complete the journey and what a joyful day that would be when we see our master our lord face to face and to hear the words well done well done my faithful servant well done that means we have to do something what we are supposed to do is written but don't forget there are obstacles on the way there are enemies that the the promised land as the israelites started entering into the promised land and getting closer to the promised land there were a uh, uh, many many uh, tribes that were occupying the promised land and they had to overcome each tribe and go uh, into the promised land to enter the promised land they need to they needed to uh, uh, overcome or defeat these enemies and my colleague is going to explain to you how the israelites overcame them and what those uh, uh, by those tribes each tribe represents to you and me today it's a very interesting i'm i'm uh, encouraging you to to listen to this series because the revelation that my colleague uh, is going to share with you is uh, very very useful for you and me and i hope and i pray that you will be with us and connected with us stay connected and go through this journey with us until the lord comes uh we are on this journey transforming and uh, the perfect man that efficient speaks about will come out of fuss and the many uh, nations many people will know that we are disciples of Christ Jesus said if we love one another the world will know that you are my disciples we cannot love one another unless we have the character of Jesus in us we cannot have agape and love the brother who is uh, uh doing damage to us doing something harmful for us we can we can't love him unless we have agape love in us we cannot have agape love until unless jesus lives in us so christ in you is hope of glory and jesus wants his body to be aware of this journey journey to the righteous journey to his righteousness uh complete man grown into the grown into the stature and the measure of Christ a perfect man and that's what he wants from his body that's the message that he wanted me to share with you today but as i told you my colleague is going to come from the next lesson onwards and he's going to share you some interesting 
uh, things about the enemies that the Israelites had to defeat and what it means to you and me today on this journey, who I am on this journey. So, until we meet next time, God bless you all.